Hello, hello, Nubis here, and welcome to Fortnite Season 2. This game's gotten pretty unrecognizable these days, but once upon a time, Fortnite was actually good. What a novel concept. So today I'm going to be returning to those simpler times, and taking you all along for the ride. This isn't even really a 100 drops video, but I still got a crisp 100 games to show you. So, why don't we just start at the beginning? Good morning, game numero uno. God, look at these graphics, the map, the vibes. I didn't even play this version when it was originally out, but it's still making me nostalgic somehow. I dropped Lonely Lodge in game one, and I think you'll find I come here a lot in this video. I gotta fix my graphics settings first, my game is chugging hard. I was minding my own business, gathering materials, when I was shot from behind, initiating my first fight of season two. I do love how the janky mechanics of this version make people play. It really feels like you've been transported right back to 2017 sometimes. The final circle was in Wailing Woods, and I was just a scared little boy back then, so I returned to my defaulty ways and hid in a bush. While sitting in my impenetrable bastion, I got a random kill. I don't know how that happened. The circle was not kind to me, so I was forced to move and fight this guy. I double pumped as fast as I could, but in the end, I didn't get him. He lived with three health! This is what most fights in season two are gonna look like, just jumping around each other with a shotgun trying to hit a shot. I did not win. In game three, I landed at this tree near Greasy. It's pretty all right. It spawns two chests. The loot I got out of it, though, was awful. I mean, gray SMG, grenades, purple scuff, this offering. Well, what is this? While scouring the countryside, I somehow managed to pick up two scars. I mean, this season two. Jesus Christ, I'm winning this game. Oh no, make that three scars. That's, that's three. Trace. As the circle began to close on the top 10, I ran into the first person I've seen this entire game. Brazilian kidnapper, okay. But unfortunately for me, even though I had two entire scars, I was missing one key component, skill. In game four, I'm dropping into old Loot Lake. Just look at her, she's beautiful. I took the top drop because I'm not a pussy, but Soldier Dimitri's not here to spray down this time, sad. Of the many things that old Loot Lake had to offer, good loot was never one of them. I mean, look at this shit. Absolutely none of this footage is from 2017. All of these games were recorded in December of 2022, but honestly, it really looks like they weren't sometimes. I'm even hitting it with a default dance. Come on, that wasn't an impressive kill. Hold on, is the burst assault rifle actually good? Nah, it's not possible. Oh, hell yeah, this is some high-tier gameplay. Oh no, a half-decent player. Blech. Game 5, I'm going to Dusty Factories. Now this is what people really missed when the meteor hit. Don't worry, I did end up wandering into Dusty proper. The thing about this place is, despite its pretty awful loot, there's pretty much always at least one other person here. It's so weird. There's legit only three chests here, total. There's a tree in Moisty Mire that has more loot than this place. I still like Dusty, though. I mean, who doesn't? It's iconic. It's great. The divot's way better, though. Back near Factories, the storm caught me in a bad spot with this guy, and he just would not give up. Holy shit, just let go, you're not worth that much, just, I gotta keep going, man. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but who the fuck are you? Please come back in two to four business days. Thank you for shopping with Nubis Technologies, your package of bullets to the face has been delivered. Back in the final circle again, I'm still a scared little weasel, but I also found this really cool hiding spot where I could clip to the back of this truck. Guess the hiding spot wasn't that good though, because I was still found and then slaughtered like a fucking animal. Let's go, Brandon. Something something, first shot accuracy doesn't exist yet, so every arrow fight feels like playing the lottery. This is what every single mid-range fight looks like on this version of the game. Like crosshairs right on him, just hit the bullets! I did kill him, and also this guy for good measure, but now I'm stuck in the storm. The lack of vehicles is really apparent. Where do you think you're going? That's my supply drop, motherfucker. I tried to be fancy on this guy, but it backfired terribly. Horribly, just, uh... Game seven, I went greasily grow with two guns to my name. I managed to kill one guy, but then got gunned down myself. Could you believe I never go here? No, stop! I have a family! In game nine, I somehow found myself in the active war zone known as Retail Row and found this young man simply trying to heal. I killed him! I guess his vengeful soul cursed me or something, because trying to pick up his medkit fucking broke my inventory. I can't use this slot anymore, but the game still thinks there's a medkit there, so I can't even put medkits in my other working slots. I think I ran into a literal octopus on a controller here, who calls himself Ford MP user star 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 still not done with retail yet i told you it's an active war zone towards the end of the game i hid under this truck for way too long i think i was taking a shit when the store moved i upgraded from that truck to this bush don't hate the strat it works i killed him but he just had to leave me on 12 health really wish i could use a medkit right now then now i'm stuck on 62 health in the final circle with three things in my inventory that would massively improve my situation but i just can't fucking use i lost the game is anyone really surprised though the rocket i shot did cause the person who killed me to die to fall damage so you're welcome axel seven Game 10. Game 11, the game just refused to give me a shotgun, no matter how hard I tried. It doesn't matter, grenades work just as good. Still rocking without a shotgun outside the same house, I sprayed this guy down, you will never be Dimitri. Even with 17 people left nearing the final circle, I still don't have a shotgun, even though my trusty AR seems to be serving me well. The corpse of that guy gave me some stuff I desperately needed, including a shotgun, even though it's the worst one, but now I'm in a pretty good position, thanks random person. Who cares about a shotgun though when I have a rocket launcher? In the final circle now, six people left, and I'm based up at the bottom of this hill, terrified for my life. Am I actually stupid enough to go for that corpse on the ground. Apps of fucking lootly I am. I somehow survived that very awful play, but now the storm is starting to move in, and the person in good position is built- Ah! What the fuck? 
<laughs> oh, he 100% rage quit after this. As the game turned into a one vs one, I was in a very not good position, but I do still have a rocket launcher, so. I was able to use my last mid kit to get back up to 100 health and turn the tables. Now I have the high ground. Ah! I hit him with this nasty rocket pump combo, but that didn't kill him. What did kill him was him trying to sneak up behind me. You really thought, huh? The rocket launcher is a free win machine. Game 12 didn't go too well. I honestly feel really bad for this guy. Like, we're started off with a scar and Boom. Yeah, I got what was coming to me for that one. Game 14, I went Dusty Depot. I'm a game crash, so moving on. In game 15, I'm in Greasy Grove, creating a human centipede of getting shot in the back. You gotta love season two fights. Even in 2022, everyone's just so terrible. Rocket launcher, rocket launcher. I'm in the top 10 now, and I'm in my worst nightmare, also known as Salty Springs. I fucking hate this place! Fuego numero 16 estoy muerto. How did Luke do this 300 times? I hate Salty Springs with a passion. Game 18's actually good. I, I do well in this one. All right, cool. I went Dusty Depot again. Let's hope it doesn't crash this time. I don't think this guy got the memo that building in Dusty Depot is pretty much worthless. I ran over to the factories, which is arguably more chaotic than the depot itself, and found this guy. I killed him, and also the guy who was trying to third party. Did your mom teach you no manners? As I made it closer to Hell Incarnate Salty Springs, I showcased the full unbridled power of the old Scar. And it was inside Hell, burning as hot as ever, where I picked up my fifth victim. However, once you enter Salty Springs, you can never leave. You can never leave. I died exactly like this. You need to get used to it. It happens a lot. In game 19, I showed off to uni my newfound god powers. This includes summoning a bunch of default pawns as well as teleporting across the map to Wailing Woods. There I found this guy who was not yet aware that I was a deity in human clothing. So with him began my goal for this game, not to win, but to confuse as many players as humanly possible. I manifested myself into Dusty Depot, where I interrupted this fight, and stole some of their loot. This is all mine now. I'm sorry, little Timmy, but my people need me, and by my people, I mean this fight. I have more loot to steal. It's all mine. I'm sorry, bro. It's the way of the loot goblin. I danced while I was shot from, like, four separate directions. The people fear me. Weep before me, young one. You have no power here. I think they've begun to worship me as their god. We're heading in a good direction. In the middle of the final circle, I built a giant upside-down T. Yeah, that's what that is. As the game whittled down to the last two players, both of whom had accepted me as their one true god, I gave one of them extra shield and the other one my rocket launcher. He was not strong enough to wield the all-powerful rocket launcher, though. So I offered my life up to the victor, and he took it. GG's, my man. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. I didn't continue my trolling in game 20. I actually died kind of horribly. In game 21, my ashes were sprinkled outside Dusty Depot. Where else would it be? I would subscribe to his YouTube channel because that's the rules, but I literally can't find it. Too bad, bucko. We're back at Dusty Depot again with the best weapon in the game, the Grey Pistol. I got a few kills in Dusty this game, including this one with the Snowball Launcher. I can never manage to get a kill with that thing because I was just lucky. This is another one of those games where I just couldn't find a shotgun no matter how hard I tried. Thankfully, this guy delivered one to me. Bushin. In the final circle. I'm scared for my life. Neither of us are in a good position right now, but at least I'm the one that's still alive. Not for long though, the final circle is not a fun place. I'm starting to understand a little bit why Double Pump was removed. My channel's not monetized yet, I have nothing to fear. However, other players should definitely fear me. Oh, Salty Springs. Uh, I'm honestly pissed I didn't get either of these kills. I deserved both of them. Whatever, I have a rocket launcher now. Even with the blue one, this lobby's mine. Like I said, yeah, it's mine. What did I tell you about the rocket launcher being a free win machine? Game 25, I exploded. See you. Help, I embarrass myself in the top four. Back at Loot Lake in game 27, trying to use murder to fill the void in my soul. It didn't work. Thanks, I hate the tack shotgun. Yo, free my man. He did nothing wrong. Oh boy, I wonder how this is gonna end. You know, I just can't predict it. This one went into that guy's montage. You know, at least I got some kills in this game. You know, Dusty, it's a death trap. Ugh. Exhibit B on why the tank shotgun is just awful in this version. He jump scared me and even got the first shot, but with a great pump, I was still able to easily kill him. I found a lot of people lurking around random houses in this game. I don't know why. I could smell them. Damn, bro, at least take me to dinner first. What the? Wow, I hate anarchism. Okay, I think it's official now. The burst assault rifle is actually good. The pump's also good, and a lot of times it's the only weapon you need. But of course, two is better than one. Rocket launcher causing me to lose? It betrayed me. No. This is probably up there for one of the nicest kills in this video. Savor it because I'm dead now. This is the only kill I get in this game. It doesn't even look that cool. It's sloppy as hell. And then I died horribly. Game 37, I was exporting 20 drop season six while playing. So, uh, yeah, my game was a little bit choppy. Choppiness or not, it didn't stop me from doing a little murdering. I love how you can just tell the exact moment the video finished exporting because everything went from PowerPoint presentation to buttery smooth. So now armed with a normal frame rate, I was able to get back to doing what I love most, making people very mad. It's crazy what going from nearly unplayable to normal in the middle of a match does for your confidence. There was absolutely no fear in my heart when I approached my final two opponents, to the point where I even went up against Double Pump with attack shotgun and won without even breaking a sweat. Game 38 is just filled with a bunch of weird 
kills that I shouldn't be getting. Who is this guy? Why is this guy two guys? What? Later in the game, I shot this guy in the back, but then also in the same spot, I got shot in the back. Woohoo! Got some more juicy Dusty Depot action in game 39. But in reality, all I really wanted to do was continue the age-old tradition of dropping the red warehouse. And I got so close that I was attacked! What the fuck, man? Dork? In game 40, I went on my boy Mindluke's stream to help him and his viewers build a giant sky base. And it was a sky base that would go down in history. Just look at it, it's beautiful. From the moment we hit max height, the disgusting ground creatures had fierce opposition to our divine structure. It didn't phase at all though we continued on because we literally had the power of god mode on our side as our materials ran thin we were unfortunately shot down but i survived because i had god mode on of course i wasn't gonna let the dream die just like that so i quickly collected some wood and went back up after multiple times of getting shot down i finally reconnected back up to the original sky base i managed to get back into zone with only 30 mats left so i had no choice but to go down again i wasn't gonna give up i made one final push but neither did the ground goblins they shot me down again at this point the circle was too small to go back up so i I just ungodded myself and allowed them to kill me. Yeah. No, we're not done sky basing yet. We're back at it again in game 41. Unfortunately, once again, it didn't take too long for us to get shot down those darn ground dwellers. Oh, look at it. A tragedy on the level of the Titanic. I found the culprits of who shot us down. It turned out they were dirty teamers, so I dealt with them accordingly. I ended up making it to the top five, so, you know, I almost won. Another loot lake drop in game 42. I'm kind of getting flashbacks here. This guy had two shotguns and I had none, yet I still killed him. How embarrassing. This is probably the best kill in the whole video. God, that was clean. This one's not too bad either. I was gonna make it out of the storm safe and sound, but then I canceled at the last second. Are you kidding me? Game 43, fifth place. Game 44, first place. Wait, okay, let's talk about it then. I didn't really fight anyone until there were seven people left, at which point I found this guy and killed him. The final final circle was very tight though. There were three people left and everyone was based up in their own towers. We basically just sprayed at each other with our own scars. We particularly bullied this guy for some reason. I feel bad for him. I ended up getting the kill in the end, which turned it into a one versus one. Me and this other guy fought for a very long time. The circle got pretty small, but in the end, I had rock and he didn't. Game 45 isn't particularly good, but look, I have those old item cards. They look so nice. Game 46, I'm all tuckered out. Game 47, oh boy, I'm in Salty Springs on 8 health with 2 SMGs to my name. I know this is gonna end well. Game 48, I got 1 kill in Dusty Depot and then died to teamers. Oh, you know I'm gonna enjoy this. You know I'm enjoying this. Oh, good night, sweet summer child. You teamed on the wrong guy, buddy. Good night. Game 49, I was up the Dusty Factories. Does anything else need to be said? In game 50, I landed where Shifty Shafts is supposed to be. It's so weird knowing that Shifty's supposed to be here, but just seeing nothing there. Someone else is here, what the hell? Later, I got jump scared like FNAF at Freddy's, if only they had shotguns in that game. After 10 or so minutes, I slid into the final circle and built up a base inside of Dusty Depot. I camped my way all the way to three people left in this tiny circle. After my rocket's done with this guy, I make that too. My final opponent is sweaty and I'm on 12 health. It's not a good position to be in, but I do have rockets, so it's pretty much illegal for me to not win. Praise be to the rocket launcher. Hey, I used this clip in the intro. Didn't show my death there, though. Gonna show you all here why I absolutely love Fatal Fields. I only had to fight one guy, and because it's Fatal Fields, he wasn't that good. On every side of Fatal, there's these little forests that can get you up to max wood after only like a minute of farming. Then, on either side of the location, there's these stone mines that can get you up to max stone if you mine most of the rocks. So, after a good drop at Fatal, you'll probably be leaving with some decent loot and at least 2,000 materials, which is more than enough to win a game of Fortnite. And here I even found a nearby supply drop, which gave me a gold rocket launcher. Yeah, I'm definitely winning this game now. A rocket launcher and a pump. Those are the only two weapons you need in this version. I got two gold rocket launchers in the final circle, and I definitely would have won if I actually got a chance to use them. Game 53, I'm based up in Salty Springs. What a terrible idea that was. I just can't catch a break. The 50s and 60s don't treat me too well. Exhibit C on why the tax shotgun sucks here. Look at this bullshit. Look, I like 1.11. I think it's a good version of the game, but a lot of the quality of life features that came later were so sorely necessary. I want to show this double pump kill because I think it looks kind of cool, but make no mistake, I totally died soon after. Game 58's missing apparently, I just noticed that now, so uh, I guess have game 58 from the last 100 drops, yeah. How did I think that was going to be a good idea? Alright, back to our regularly scheduled programming. True 2017 moments got rarer and rarer as time went on and people learned how to play on this version, so seeing a bushy boy like this always puts a smile on my face. And still, even the more complicated fights feel a little funny in this era of the game. Got sniped? Twice in a row. I didn't get sniped this game, but this is not much better.
You know, if there's any bona fide early chapter one location, it's gotta be crates. It's kind of like Tilted before Tilted even existed. And it was by this point that I had pretty much mastered the art of double pumps, so I was kind of on a roll here. And when I saw that gold rocket launcher come out of that supply drop, I saw it as an omen that I was gonna win this game. I mean, seriously, if you have rockets and a pump, especially two pumps, you're a killing machine, you're unstoppable. And so, as the final circle closed around the dusty factories area, I made my way up to the only natural high ground in the circle. A precious mound. A wonderful mound. This mound will carry me to great things. And it did. It turns out there was a pair of teamers in the match, so I dealt with them accordingly. Second one held on for a little bit longer, but he's no match against the old gold scar. So now there's three people left, and I'm still hunkered down on this wonderful mound, and I'm laying into the other guy. And you know, I gotta respect his perseverance. He held on for a long time, knowing he's probably not gonna make it out of this alive. So now it's just me and one other guy, and uh, I, I wonder where he is. Yeah, GG. Game 63, I looked death straight in the eye as he took me to the nether realm. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing back in Salty Springs, but might as well do some murdering while I'm here. It comes complimentary with your stay in this hellhole. Made it to the end game at crates where I watched a man get sniped off his own skybase. Woof. Empathy for the fallen aside, though, I am looking to win this game, which I didn't. Found a guy hiding in the shack of shame game 65, and I thought I was so slick putting that trap down, so I was confused why it kept going off and no one was dying. Eh, he just needed a little assistance is all. I think I gave this guy an actual heart attack. I feel so bad for his little default soul. Alright, we're back in the literal exact same circle as last time, so if I get sniped again, I think I'm just cursed. I'm cursed! At least I didn't die the same way three times in a row. I know most of you don't know who any of these people are, but Arslan is a geek with an ego the size of Texas, so I don't really need to explain anything else. In game 68, Fatal Fields got a little too fatal for me this time. 2023 is the downfall, oh no. Believe me, I really wanted to win game 69. I mean, I was playing it so strategically, I didn't even have to leave Lonely Lodge until there were 10 people left, but then... Oh no. Oh lord. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't- you just can't fight curses. You, you can't. There's nothing I can do. So in game 70, I decided that, you know, I kind of have two curses acting at once, right? There's one where the storm's not on me ever, and two, if the final zone's on crates, then it's gonna end horribly for me. So I thought, if I land at crates, then the storm's gonna go away from me, and so it's not gonna end on crates, and so I might have a chance of, of, of winning, right? Well, the first part worked out perfectly. The storm was about as far away as it could have possibly been. And the second part, uh, well, it wasn't in crates, and I wasn't in the top three, so, hey! That's a win. Now, at this point, I'm surprised when I don't die by a sniper. I'm not always the guy getting sniped, though. Sometimes I'm the one doing the sniping. As the game drew to a close, though, I had to deal with yet another batch of teamers. They're pretty common. Though, of course, the universal rule is if you have to team, you obviously suck ass. Even still, I somehow embarrassed myself by dying to attack shotgun. I, of course, watched him choke the game. Well, it turns out the guy I died to last time is a dirty, good-for-nothing teamer. So I, of course, took great pride and joy in personally banning him. Oh my god, more teamers? Seriously? This is the third time in a row. Get fucked! Get fucked you too, bitch! I fucking own you! You fucking bitch! Three teamers in a row! Different groups! Different people! Different teamers! Get fucked! I own all of you! <clears throat> would've been, uh, would've been great if I didn't lose, though. Game 75, I landed at Dusty Factories. You can probably take a wild guess as to what happened. There really is no better feeling in the world than ticking away a guy's entire health bar who didn't even know you were there. There's also no worse feeling in the world than hitting for 8 damage on a shot that looked like a perfectly good headshot. Remember when I said I die like this a lot? Yeah. Starting off Game 78 by doing the merry-go-round in this basement. In the top 10 around Loot Lake, I spent a solid 10 minutes fighting this guy who just wouldn't give up when I finally got him. Now it's the final circle, 5 people left. I'm on low health and getting barraged by rockets. This is great. Thankfully, it's never nothing a little dumb. Double pump can't fix. So now I need to make my way into zone and I need shield and my last hope is a supply drop so I'm making a desperate run for it. It didn't work out. Uh, looks like Brazilian kidnapper got his revenge. In game 79 I killed British people. Wish I could do that in real life. And a few seconds later I left the commonwealth. Don't want to talk about game 80. It was pretty much by this point that I had completely figured out how to do well in this version. First order of business is to get mats. Lots of them. You want max wood at least and a good amount of stone before you even think about going into the end game. And once you have those mats you just need to lay low. Don't fight anyone you don't have to. Shields and health are hard to come by in this version. And then once the storm gets like yay big with about 5 to 10 people left, use those mats you've been farming all game to build yourself up into a tower. A big one. Pop some shots if you feel like you can, but if the storm's on you, don't leave the tower. It's your best friend. The reason for this is that builds were a lot stronger in this early period of the game. This means that towers are harder to shoot down and easier to fortify, so if you're in the zone at a tower made of strong materials, the other players are going to have a really hard time getting to you. This also means though that more often than not, people are going to try to go over you, so keep your head low. But if 
if you play it right and you keep rebuilding your tower in every new zone, then eventually you'll be on the ultimate high ground above everybody else in the match. But at some point, you are going to need to fight that last guy, and sometimes you just mess up. But hey, the strategy worked. I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you this strategy. This version's not being played anymore, but you know, the, g the general principle, you know. In game 82, I'm back at Lonely Lodge looking forward to doing the exact same strategy, but then I ran into three teamers. Three whole fucking teamers. Even despite them, I still got max wood and stone and made it into the end game. But this end game was a tricky one. I was fighting people I didn't want to fight, losing shield I couldn't replenish. So in the end, I got shot in the back for third place. I don't even know if this is like objectively true, but this is the worst game in the video. It's just like emotionally, this one hurt. So after the emotional damage of that last round, I went back to my other favorite location, Fatal Fucking Field. Still keeping to the same strategy, I kept my nose clean and collected over 2,000 materials. With only four people left in the final circle, I was posted up in this makeshift port fort I could see anyone who approached me from a mile away. Oh, let's go. Another 2017 moment. There's only 16 games left. You gotta cherish these. Every day, I thank God for the existence of the rocket launcher. If it didn't exist, I wouldn't have gotten half the kills I have in this video. This is one of my favorite wins in the video, not because it's particularly impressive, but just because it felt like I was being transported back in time. It felt good. Oh no, I just feel dirty for that one. Sir, please leave the premises. You are not supposed to be here. Yeah, in this one, I simply just got caught in the storm and also had attack shotgun. All right, I'm just sneaking around. I don't know where the other person is. And I, oh, oh no! Ah! Game 87, I'm back at crates. Figured I should still try to negate that curse. I am still following through on my strategy. I'm using the small forest next to retail to get up to max wood. The issue with this game is that I was stuck on low shield pretty much the entire time, and nobody I killed had any. And when low health is paired with getting shot in the back, you're not really expected to live that long. All right, no more nonsense. Let's just drop back into Lonely again. I only had to deal with one guy, which is pretty standard, and then I made it back into the top 10 without much noise, which happens pretty much most games these days. I ran into one guy at this broken house and killed him without taking any damage. But then I made the mistake of dancing on him, and I could tell it was a mistake the second I saw that guy staring at me. Time is a flat circle, after all, and the same thing happened to him. Oh yeah, running empty-handed through the streets of Anarchy Acres, my favorite act. Activity. All right, well, the Christmas tree's on loot. Let's see what you got. Okay, blue AR. Green AR. Wow, I already have that. Thanks. And gray burst. Wow, thanks. I'm gonna beat Santa Claus with my shoe. Why couldn't I have just stayed at Lonely? Or hell, even the better farm. Fatal Fields. I mean, to be fair, I was a bit tired of the long games without much action, so this game I went Pleasant Park and got some. Pleasant Park is a lot of fun here, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest location in this version, so you're gonna run into a lot of people. I wasn't expecting to win this game, I wasn't expecting to live that long, I was just looking for some good old-fashioned fun. And in this game, I died as I lived, getting sniped when I didn't expect it. Back in the end game, in game 91, and I've built the mother of all bases, I have a pretty good chance here. This one got pretty tight towards the end, but I do have a gold rocket launcher, so it didn't really phase me that much. So now I have an RPG, the high ground, and full health in a one first one, I'm pretty confident. Here. The issue is, he just wouldn't fight me. He refused to fight me. So he took it to a heal off, and despite having two medkits and clicking with all my might, I lost. To say that I wanted to strangle him with an extension cord is a bit of an understatement. Back at the Fields of Fade in game 92, I got up to max wood and stone, preparing to slide my way into the end game. However, my plan was cut short when I got sniped by the same guy I lost to last time. I'm telling you, I've never wanted to wrongfully ban someone more in my life. Game 93, I'm sitting in the Shack of Shame slash Shack of Hope, depends on how you look at it. I was sitting there for quite a a bit until I found a chance to pounce on some poor unsuspecting soul. There's no turbo build to help you here, so just spray into a box enough, you'll eventually get him. I've gotten pretty good at double pump by this point, so I thought this kill was pretty nice even though it was louder than a construction site. <gasps> I see it. The mound. I'm on my way. When I'm on top of this mound, I'm on top of the world, which is why I never should have left it. Oh my god, it's this guy again. Stop third partying, more like hop off my dick, Jesus Christ. Once I started employing my strategy, getting to the end game was pretty easy. Winning, on the other hand, well, that requires you to actually be good which I am not. All right, we're in the home stretch now. Five games left. Going into this, I wanted at least 10 wins. I have eight right now. Let's see if we can pull through. Well, you can probably tell by my loot and general situation that this isn't one of them. Game 96, though, I'm serious about this. I need those two wins. So I'm landing at Lonely Lodge. The first three quarters of the game went the same way. It pretty much always does. Kept my head low, didn't find anyone. But this was also one of those games where I just couldn't find a shotgun. I didn't fear, though, because this guy just found a supply drop and I made him poop his pants so hard he killed himself. So now, thanks to that, I pretty much have the best loot anyone could ask for. And even better than that, my my mound, it's in the zone! And as I sat atop my mound, none other than God himself appeared to me to deliver me his commandments. And he said unto me, Thou shalt do a little trolling. As I was flying around, I stumbled across the corpse of a man who wielded the all-powerful Zapatron. So now I'm based up, I have over 2,000 materials, and I have loot so good that it's literally impossible to get. By the way, I'm pretty sure that's actually the first recorded Zapatron kill in a normal Battle Royale match since 2017. That's me, baby. And I know for a fact that this is the first ever Zapatron win. 
That's history, people. Right before your eyes. Still a little tomfoolery going on in game 97, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm still looking for one more win. And it was looking to me I might just get it. A back-to-back -back would be quite nice. And as the storm was closing in, I gave Big Cock Brock a hot and steamy load of shotgun pellets. And it was in the final circle where God appeared to me once more and gave me a Zapatron. But unfortunately, despite how much I wanted it, back-to-back -back Zapatron wins just weren't on the menu. I've got three games left to get a win. Why in the hell am I going to Salty Springs? I mean, just look at my loot right now and tell me this is a good idea. I mean, somehow, Miraculously, I was able to make it out of Salty Springs alive with male loot and no shield. So it doesn't really surprise me that I only really made it out like five meters away from the location. In game 99, I landed the PewDiePie Bridge, and this is a wonderful way to start the game. I left the location with a gray burst and five bandages. If you bet it on me winning this one, then you make bad financial decisions. Eventually, I got some somewhat decent loot and used it to show off my absolutely amazing aim. It took me way longer to kill this guy than I'd like to admit, but I did get him eventually. But now I'm in the final circle, stuck having to move through Loot Lake with less than optimal mats. I was really banking on this guy having some materials, but he literally had nothing, so my verdict is that I'm fucked. My only choice was to just bum rush whoever I could and try to get their materials, but of course the people that I did kill also had none. So yeah, this game kind of shows the importance of materials in the final circle, because you have none, you're screwed. Alright, here we are. Game 100. It's been a hell of a ride. This is some of the best shape I've been in coming out of Lonely Lodge yet. My loot is pristine, my mats are good, I'm in the zone, life is good. I only had to deal with one guy outside of Lonely who took away most of my health bar, but I did have a rocket launcher so I talked him into bed. I was able to get back up to max health and get into the end game, where I expanded the shack of hope into a base of my own. Like always, I kept my nose clean and even got the bounce into the next circle. And once the circle moved away from me, I was the first one to get up into new high ground. And as you all know by this point, being on high ground with a rocket launcher, even a blue one, is one of the best positions you can be in. As I was preoccupied barraging one of the two other people left, the other guy snuck up behind me. I still killed him, he just left me with some battle scars. So now it's a one versus one and the other guy is under me somewhere, I just need to figure out where. Thankfully once the storm moved, he showed his face and he was just a scared little noob guy, I would feel bad but I need that one win, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, it's literally just by this point in recording the voiceover that I realized I only have nine wins. I, I swear to God, when I was recording this video and when I was editing it, I swear I had 10 wins. I also made the mistake of not keeping logs in this video, so I don't know what happened in game 58, and since it's the only game that's missing and I'm missing a win that I swear on me mom I had, I'm just gonna call game 58 a win and that's my 10. Don't click off the video just yet, it ain't over till it's over, and it's not over. I finished recording the 100 drops in the nick of time, so there were only two games left before they switched to another version. So I decided for the final two games, I would just go around and troll people, for the fun. I even made the speed of the sun and moon bend to my will. Yeah, much like I did earlier, I would just fly around and spectate fights, confusing everyone I saw along the way. I of course didn't kill anyone, I'm not that much of an asshole, but I did steal loot. But hey, I still gave back to my community. But as soon as it whittled down to just me and one other guy, I took to the skies and left the world behind me. Oh, you best believe I got so high that I could see the edge of the storm. Once I had gotten high enough to reach my satisfaction, I ungodded myself and let the storm do the rest. In the next game, the final game, I took to the skies in a slightly different way by building a giant vertical sky base. My sound did get broken from farming mats a little too fast, but that didn't phase me. The sky base must go on. Oh yeah, I also figured out how to spawn chests, so that adds a whole new avenue to trolling. Chests, supply drops, you name it, I can spawn it. It's quite funny. The final circle was squarely on Dusty Depot, so I got on top of it and just started spawning shit. Eventually, I spawned so much shit that it ended up crashing the server. Sometimes there is such a thing as too much trolling. And, uh, I, I think I reached it here. So, what are my final thoughts on OG Fortnite? I think it's a good version of the game. It's simple, fun, easy to understand, and a lot more strategic than later versions, which I like a lot. It's by far the jankiest version I've ever played, but I mean that in the best possible way. It's clunky in a fun and simple way. However, I think the map update that came later in Season 2, as well as a ton of the quality of life changes that came with later seasons, were necessary to make Fortnite a smoother experience. So overall, I give this version a solid 7 out of 10. It's good, simple, down-to-earth fun. It has that Minecraft alpha vibe, all with the neon grass and being simple and very unpolished, but I still like it a lot. This isn't nostalgia speaking either, this was my first real experience with this area of the game, and I still had a blast. Of course, this video would not be possible without Project Era, so thanks to them, and thanks to you for sticking around to this point. It means a lot to me. So, if you liked the video, subscribing wouldn't hurt. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Join Project Era, the link's in the description, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.